conservative new media viewers and science fans all around the world. I have, with my personal opinion, an incredible science story for you right here and something to consider. Stay with me here. This is big in my personal opinion. First of all, my personal opinion only, not alleging facts, not casting any spurs, all for entertainment purpose only. Please check disclaimers. What if human beings were able to travel extremely fast across the solar system? What if they were able to do that beyond? What if we were able through the use of advanced technology to break the speed of light? Not just break it, but shatter it. Could science fiction at some point become reality? I'm talking about a warp drive. Yes, that sounds like science fiction. And yet, there is real science behind this. I want you to stay tuned and check this out. Here's the deal. Apparently, there is now some theories about being able to propel a craft at around 10 times the speed of light. That is absolutely incredible for so many different reasons. First of all, let's deal with the speed of light. The speed of light is 186,282 miles per second, I believe. I gotta double check that. I'm gonna put, obviously, stuff in the description below the video so you can check it out. I'm trying to remember all these numbers off the top of my head. I am a super genius, though, but let's stay focused here. Okay, so 186 million miles a second, approximately. Obviously, 186,282, fine. That means that you know, when you're talking about, like, let's say the sun, for instance, the sun is an astronomical unit away from the earth approximately. So it's like, I think that's around 93 million miles away. Uh, I think it's 92, you know, 0.955, something like that. So therefore, if you use the calculation, it takes many minutes for light from the sun to actually reach the earth. Okay. So now let's talk about this. So so what this warp drive might be able to do, if it's able to be implemented, is to be able to allow a craft to go around 10 times the speed of light. 10 times, okay? That's 1.86, etc. million miles per second. Now, with that kind of speed, so many things open up right there, okay? But I'll table that for a second. Let's talk about the science. We'll get back to that. Let's talk about the science of this. How does that happen? What it, what it does is basically creates this, this warp field, if you will. As I'm showing you in this illustration here, you have a craft that's actually inside this loop. And actually, it would be more of a... Of a Donut shape, I'm gonna get in, into that in, in, in just a bit, bit here, so stay with me. So this loop, if you will, uh, creates a field whereby the actual, within that field, time and space are basically quote unquote flat or non-warped, if you will. In other words, you know, there because of Einstein's theory of relativity, all kinds of different physics, etc. Uh, at least what we know of them now, it is not possible through normal means, if you will, under normal physics to break the speed of light. Now we can talk about tachyons and everything. Okay, let's just not deal with that right now. Just for all intents and purposes in a general discussion that, you know, we understand that now with basic science to be, you know, basically true and certainly for, for objects of, of significant mass, etc., etc. That's the best of my knowledge and ability right now, whatever. Let's table, again, let's table that debate and theoretical exceptions. That's a side discussion. Okay. So, but so what this does is this keeps that that space around the spacecraft to be operating within you know the sort of n normal bounds of what we know as physics, whatever. Now the space in front of and right behind the spacecraft that is what gets affected. The space in front of 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 the spacecraft, time and space basically become. Uh, uh, shrunk, if you will, it, it kind of you know squished. So it's kind of like like pulling it together, pulling it in, if you will, and then behind it gets you know pushed out, or you could say expanded, whatever. 
In other words, you basically increase the quote unquote speed by not affecting the actual speed of the object, if you will. Um, but what you do is you, if you like, we you thinking about time and space um, in dimensional terms, like on a sheet of paper. So, you know, you basically make it, you know, two dimensional, if you will. And again, I may be getting some of this wrong. I'm trying to, con you know, cram a lot of subjects and ideas together off the top of my head here with no notes. So, you know, bear with me and, and cut me some slack. So if you, what you do is rather than, than affecting the speed of that object, if you take that paper and you push it together, now you're, now you're basically, you know, not, you're changing the game, if you will. So think of it like this, and this is not going to be a perfect analogy. You know, again, bear with me and cut me some slack on this, but this is basically gives you a very rough concept of it. Think of this paper as space time, if you will. This is the you know un uh, universe that we live in now. Well, JDV, well, why is it flat? Okay, well, it's just, we're talking about dimensional type of situation, right? So in other words, like you know, this is two dimension, if you will. Well, technically it's three dimension, but obviously, you know, if something's on the paper, we talk about that as roughly being two dimensional, etc. And we're three dimensional. Well, you know, if you go a, a dimension above uh, space time, whatever, there's theoretically eleven dimensions now, I believe, whatever. Uh, then, you know, the space-time would look pretty flat, I believe. Now, anyway, and again, let's table some of these other discussions for other stuff. We're not trying to get super technical with everything right now. I'm trying to explain this warp drive here as quickly as I can off the top of my head so that as many people as possible can understand it. So, okay, let's say here, this is a ship. This is, let's say, the, what's the warp drive ship. My handwriting's not so great. And let's say this is the destination. We'll make it big like a planet or something like that. Okay, so here you have like normally, you know, a certain speed. What this does is rather than increasing the speed, if you will, of the ship beyond uh, light speed, because, you know, you, we, we can't do that uh, through normal means. What this does is it kind of changes the game and shrinks it down. Now, doesn't go from here to here, that's more of a wormhole type thing, but you, I can't do exactly what I want to do with this piece of paper in terms of showing you, but it basically, it, it, it changes the, the distance by, again, scrunching the stuff in front and then, it, you know, it, uh, expanding it on the way back, therefore basically making this space-time di uh, distance, if you will, shorter. That makes, some, you know, hopefully that will make some sense. So let's talk about the implications of this, if we're able to do it. You know, look, we've got a solar system, uh, and, and again, the, all the, you know, the planets and the bodies move around, so where everything is in relation to other things, you know, changes constantly. But roughly, you know, we've got the sun, that's one astronomical unit away from us, that's around 93 million miles, right? And we've got Pluto all the way on the outside there, although there's some, you know, you know theoretical planets and, and other objects that might be, okay, fine. Let's just, let's just deal with Pluto right now, and Pluto may not be a planet. doesn't matter. Again, let's deal with all those things. Let's say Neptune, Pluto, whatever. So Pluto is about, you know, again, it moves around, but roughly around that 40 uh, astronomical unit, uh, you know, space away from us. So if we're able to get a craft like this working, even if we can just put, only put instrumentation in it, uh, and not, you know, human beings, you know, whenever we first develop it, whatever, and obviously we can, I'm sure the advancements will continue. Now we're talking about, you know, a, a distance that would normally take an enormous amount of time, uh, you know, by the warp drive standard, uh, would now only take like, like around a uh, half hour. That's... Amazing. Think about being able to go to Pluto or sending information or sending a craft to Pluto in around a half hour. I mean, forget about Mars and, and Jupiter and Saturn and Titan and all this type of stuff, whatever. Alpha Centauri. Alpha Centauri, I believe, is the closest uh, star to us. It's around, if I'm remembering correctly, like 4.37 light years away or something like that. And, and there's, there's actually different, there's Proxima, there's different stars in that, in that system there. But, so, you know, think, you know, that right now is completely, you know, unthinkable to get out to Alpha Centauri. But if we had something like this, a warp drive that could go 10 times the speed of light, now 
we could get, make it to Alpha Centauri in less than half a year. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So this is something, in my personal opinion, that is extremely, extremely exciting. We could talk about being able to travel around, possibly colonize uh, the solar system uh, that we have here. How could that possibly affect transportation on the Earth or around the Earth? I mean, this could revolutionize so many things. Are you excited about it? Number one. Number two, what are your comments on that? I mean, this is, I mean, for someone like me that grew up watching so much science fiction and loving this stuff and being so excited about it, to hear this is just, just it's, it's super, super exciting. It is super exciting. And this is maybe, you know, if we could possibly get this thing done, could just totally blow open the doors to so much science and discovery and exploration and just advancement for human beings. Number three, what, how do you think this might come about? When do you think, number four, when do you think it could happen? There's just, I mean, there's so many things going through my head right now. I need you to comment on this. I'm just super pumped up about this. I want to do more research into this. You tell me where you're at on this. We're talking about warp drive technology is now theory. Oh, I, for, I'm sorry. I almost forgot about this because this is actually very important. This actually was theorized before, but when they theorized this before, the amount of energy that it would take to try to produce this was the size of a huge planet, okay? And that obviously, you know, isn't feasible, you know, for us. Now with modifications to make this, this ring around the, the ship more of a donut type of thing, you know, tweaking that a little bit, the amount of energy it's theorized that it would take to actually do this is now the size of, I think, one of our, um, uh, uh, and I'll put, the, again, put the information in the description, um, uh, space probes or spacecraft, something like that, one, you know, one of the, one of the uh, so something obviously far, far more reasonable, far more reasonable, uh, and, and that's actually, in my personal opinion, you know, uh, t theoretically, potentially feasible. So now that, that changes the entire game. There needs to be, in my personal opinion, a serious discussion on this. I am, again, super excited about the science of this. I'm super excited about the potential of this. I think this could just break open so many things. I mean, being able to think about possibly breaking the speed of light around 10 times faster than the speed of light. And let's think about this. I mean, you know, if we can maybe, if this could ever be done and we could go 10 times the speed of light, could we even go faster than that? You know, what, what if we could do 20, 50 times the speed of light, you know, etc. I mean, there's so many things that, again, could open up then. And we could talk about serious, you know, interstellar, intersolar system uh, type of exploration stuff, not just to Alpha Centauri, but, to, you know, really, you know, getting around our parts of the Milky Way galaxy and stuff. So again, tremendous, tremendous science here. Extremely, extremely exciting. What could this open up? And again, that then obviously, if we could ever do a warp drive, in my personal opinion, this raises the real possibility of possibly encountering alien life forms whether that's intelligent life forms that may also have inter interstellar travel or that may just be simple microbes on a planet or whatever like that. There's so much that's going on and studying of that, whether it be microbes on comets, and you know, which, you know, curiosity on Mars, etc., etc., etc. There are billions and billions of planets out there, there and, and we're discovering more all the time. What possibly could be out there that we may be able to discover and do you feel like this warp drive could help us find life on other planets, encounter aliens, colonize other planets, be able obviously to view different things? How could that affect, again, commerce? How could that affect our science? So much to talk about here. I'm super excited about it. I, again, you guys, those that have been with me know my channel. I love science. I love this stuff. I'm a super genius and I just can't get enough of it. 
but I need your comments now on where you're at with it. This is, this is real science. This isn't science fiction. This is proposed theory potential. Where are you at on it? Give me the comments below. Please subscribe above. I'm John D. Villarreal, the four-time national champion and the super genius. You're watching conservative new media. Please rate this video up. Also, please post it to your social networking sites. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.